I found out that my birth parents are married to each other and I have full siblings. I was adopted at three months old. I had a dysfunctional family growing up, but I was cared for and loved. Both of my adopted parents passed away in separate car accidents. My dad when I was 17 and my mom three years ago when I was 24. I had a semi-open adoption, but my birth parents requested my adoptive parents stop sending them photos and updates about me when I was less than a year old. I had a vague idea of who my birth parents were. I grew up knowing their names and I had several photos of them. I did a DNA test and was matched with three full siblings, which shocked me. I was always told they were young and that they barely knew each other and wanted to further their education. About three months ago, I decided to Google their names and I found their social media. Turns out they are married to each other now. I stalked them on Facebook a bit and it seems like they have a relatively happy life. I ended up reaching out to my birth mother via Facebook, telling her that I would love to get to know her and that I've had a great life and that I have no expectations. She took a month to respond and when she did, she said she was surprised that I had reached out and to please not contact any of my siblings as they aren't aware of my existence. I didn't respond for a few days, but I ended up just asking her why she chose to give me up and why she never told anyone about me. She responded and said that I was a NICU baby. She and my birth father were 17 when I was born and they weren't prepared to raise a disabled child. She said at the time that they were under the impression that I would never live independently and that they weren't in a place to have a special needs child. Oh my goodness. That is, they were, oh, whoa. Damn, they literally said, let's just get rid of this one and try again. <gasps> the ableism. I was again shocked. I definitely was in the lower percentiles for growth until puberty. But according to my grandmother, by the time I was eight months old, I was hitting all of the markers for regular mental development. I have a master's in mathematics from a tier one university. I was an athlete in high school and I never had any issues in school beyond being really horrible in art class. I'm married with a child. I'm a fully functioning adult with a successful career and a family of my own. And it hurts to know I was given up on because of the slight chance I wouldn't turn out perfect. Part of me feels like I missed out on a life with siblings. I was raised as an only child and that I could still have a chance to know them and love them and that my daughter would have a chance to have cousins. My youngest siblings aren't even in elementary school yet and I could have a normal sibling bond with them or at least be part of their lives from a young age and I wish that I had that chance. I am not angry at my birth parents for giving me away. I don't hate them. I am hurt but I'm not angry. I am angry that they've requested I not reach out to my adult siblings and I'm considering doing it anyway. Am I the asshole for not drinking the coffee that my boyfriend has made for me? I, 24 female, have been with my boyfriend, 25 male, for three and a half years. He knows I am a bit specific about certain things, like tidying up or how I like to cook certain dishes and not to annoy him with those. I always make sure that I make them for myself. Now, my morning coffee is very specific. I like two teaspoons of instant coffee with two teaspoons of hazelnut syrup filled to the half cup with boiling water and the rest filled with oat milk. That is specific. And I like that in my specific morning coffee mug. I do realize that I sound very annoying, but because I am aware of it, I always make it myself and would never ask for someone to make my coffee exactly like that. When my colleagues are making me a coffee, I take whatever they make me and I say thank you very much. For three and a half years, my boyfriend has seen me make my morning coffee this way and got fed up with me refusing that he makes coffee for me. So I have shown him several times exactly how I like it. But still, every time he makes it for me, it's not the right dose of coffee or hazelnut syrup or it isn't in the right cup. I can get over that one to be fair. And I swear I do not want to be that annoying, but the coffee just doesn't taste how I am craving for it to taste. It's like my body isn't satisfied with it and I keep craving coffee until I get it, but I don't want to have two coffees in the morning. I have told my boyfriend that I appreciate his gesture, but to let me make my coffee in the morning. This morning, he got annoyed when he asked me if I wanted coffee in bed, and I said, no, I'll make it. He said, quote, I know you're going to get up and make one, but just trust me. So I trusted him and he made me a machine espresso coffee with a bit of syrup and some milk. He said, thanks, but I don't want to drink machine espresso in the morning. Never have I ever drink machine coffee in front of him. I don't like it. And I only ever buy capsules for him because I'm able to remember how he likes his coffee. He got really angry at me, oh. told me he is just trying to be nice and I'm being an asshole about it. I very much disagree. It has been three and a half freaking years and I have shown him at least 10 10 times how I like my coffee. Once again, I never asked him to do this for me. I do not feel grateful for the gesture at all either. But am I being a spoiled asshole here? Sure, you're not. No, you are not the asshole. Woo! She knows how specific she's being. She knows it's a lot. And that's why she makes it for herself. Exactly. I think if anything, the boyfriend 
He, it's very clear his love language is acts of service. He really wants to give some acts of service to his <laughs> lovely girl. But there are other acts of service he can probably accomplish and yeah. get done. And she knows that this is one way she likes to be very specific. And I'm a similar way. I'm very specific about my coffee. And I think part of what she loves about it is making it. Yeah. It's, that's what it seems like. It's not even the exact flavoring of everything. I bet if the boyfriend got it exactly right, it still wouldn't hit the same as if she made it herself because it's part of this like little accomplishment it sounds like she has for herself and it also sounds like she's explained that very clearly to the point where you start wondering why is he still pushing it after three and a half years and why is this almost a fight even it, it is turning into a fight because clearly there's something more there there are just other ways to kind of scratch his itch of needing to help her there yeah. are other things that can be done do the dishes and I can understand once again maybe his his, his need or his want to be able to do something like that. And, and that is showing that he's good. But if she is adamant in saying like, this is not the act of service I need from you, then have the conversation. Listen in that way, perhaps. You must be a really good communicator in relationships. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> this oh. is just like the way you're breaking this down or like therapy. Like, I feel like I'm, I'm in like, a lot of therapy. I'm just like, I feel like I just picked up so much just now. Am I the asshole for canceling our anniversary trip because my husband drowned my terrarium? I, 29 female, traveled across the country to visit a company regarding an incredible job offer. I spent two days touring the company to decide if it would be the right fit for me after years of self-employment. After meeting with the company, I visited my sister, 32 female, and her family a few towns over. We barely get to see each other because of work and distance, so it was wonderful to spend a few days with her, the family, and her new baby. I was gone for a total of eight days. When I returned home, I was excited to spend time with my husband, 33 male, and tell him about the trip, my visit with my sister, my impression of the city, etc. We were meant to be celebrating our anniversary and decided to put off the discussion about whether or not I should accept the job offer until after our anniversary getaway. I'd arranged for us to go on a luxury train ride because he's a big train enthusiast and we were meant to leave for the trip three days after I got home. This is when the problem started. I have a very large closed bioactive terrarium, which I made with my mother 15 years ago. It's one of my favorite things I have of her from before she passed. This terrarium is my pride and joy and has come with me everywhere since we planted it. It was always super healthy and beautiful, and I've only ever had to open it four times to do little maintenance and watering. My husband knows all of this, which is why I don't understand why he decided to tamper with it in my absence. I didn't notice the night I got home because I was exhausted, but the next morning I went to check on the terrarium to find it in a terrible state. The roots were rotting, the plants were drying and molding. He told me that the day I left, he poured a few cups of water into the vessel and sealed it again. I was so mad, I cried, and it turned into a huge argument because, quote, it's just a plant and, quote, all you do is look at it anyways. He called me ungrateful and overdramatic and that I should appreciate that his intention was to help me and that he didn't ask because he didn't want to bother me on my trip. I ended up canceling our anniversary plans, partly because I was so upset that I didn't want to go and partly because I wanted to try and salvage the plants and that would require time. He hit the roof when I told him and is now sleeping in a separate room and refusing to speak to me because according to him, I'm being petty and trying to destroy our marriage. Am I being oversensitive about my plants? My friends are pretty evenly split and have pointed out that he was just trying to be thoughtful however misguided it was no chance you mm. for those that don't know a terrarium they're so cool they are it's essentially like a dome like i've seen mm -hmm. them mostly be domes but once you set up the plants and the environment and you add water essentially you create this atmosphere where it's self-sustaining it's an ecosystem it's an ecosystem so cool. you don't add water the condensation evaporation water cycle system happens within this dome and so the fact that like she made this with her yep. mom mm -hmm. it's 15 years old yeah it survived oh, i'd be pissed and then he pours multiple cups mm -hmm. of water and i didn't want to disturb you while you're on yeah come on what kind of relationship is that? I'm sorry, like, uh, to not be able to just send a quick text. No, he there... could have. That's it's, what I'm saying. He's just, it's him 
trying to do all these dumb things it to like feels like he did on make purpose. him right. This has to be cruel intentions, right? It doesn't. How could it not? Be? I don't. Yeah, I'm like if I, he. I don't know. And you, if he was act, actually just that, like unaware, dumb, that and dumb? he just didn't realize that like, he actually thought that he was doing something nice, then he's still in the wrong because he should have turned around and been like, I am so sorry and not gotten defensive and say, you're trying to destroy our marriage. That's where it went really wrong. Yeah. You just look at it anyways. That's so, so that, rude. You can apply that to so many things. Why do we keep any shit in our houses? It's. It's that classic thing that people do when they're backed into a corner, they know they're wrong, and then they try to fight fire with fire. We're going to blow this up into something so much more when we're not even focused on the terrarium anymore. We're focused on, okay, now I'm considering you as my partner, not because you wrecked this, but now yeah. also because how you're responding to it. 